Hi, this is Brad from Power Tools. In this video, we're going to go through adding type, vendor, and price filters to your store. So, firstly, let's log in to the filter menu. Once we've logged in, go to filter menu, go to type and vendor filters, or vendor and type filters, select create new group. We do want to turn on auto collections and we do want to automatically add new types. So what Auto Collections does is it will create a new collection and set it all up with all the products for each type. And likewise, we have the same option for vendors. So we'll enable that in a minute. Automatically add new types means that as you add a new type to your store, it'll automatically get added to the filter menu. Now this works best if you have the auto collections enabled because it does require that you have a collection for that type. We'll do the same settings for the vendor group. We'll enable auto collections. We'll automatically add any new vendors. And this time we're also gonna keep this group sorted because uh, typically vendors, you would think they'd be ordered A to Z. So we'll press add filters and it's going to queue up a job. So we'll have a look and we can see this job is queued, it's running, and it should only take another second, and it's complete. Now in your store it may take quite a while longer, particularly if you have a large number of products. This demo store is not particularly big, but you can still see it has quite a lot of options. Okay, so now we have all the, the brands and all the types. So we'll press save and update. And what's gonna happen now is a job will be queued, same as before. And that's currently running here. Now, if we go to our live store, we'll reload that. And you can see we've got filters for type and brand. Now let's add some filters for price. So we'll go to the price range filters. Uh, let's start our lowest price at $25. We'll go 50, 75, 100, 250, and 500. So it'll create all the price ranges from under $25 all the way up to 500 and over. It's going to create a new price group for that. We'll minimize these just so we can see our new price group. And that job is currently running. Looks like it's already done. We can reload the page and check the status of that. And there we go, there's our price filters. If we press save and update, it'll queue up a job. And it was, it'll currently be going through and adding the appropriate tags to all the products. So if we reload, it may not appear immediately, but as you can see in this case, I've already preloaded the tags. So it's come up straight away. Okay, now what would happen if we decided, oh, we, you know, we want to add another price range here, maybe between, you know, 100 to $250 is a pretty big jump. So we'll delete this group. Now, in this case, uh, we also probably want to delete any collections and any tags. The reason for this is because the price filters will create a, a tag on each product and a collection for each price range. If we re-add the price range filters, we're not going to need all those old tags and collections. In this case, just to save time, I'm going to uncheck that, but typically you would you would check that. Press delete group and it's gone. Now, what would happen if we say decided we didn't like this analog brand? If we delete it and then press save and update, what you'll notice is after a short time, it's just gonna run an update now, but that will come back. Now, the reason it's gonna come back is because we've set it up so it automatically adds a new type. 
So if we delete it, it sees it as a new type, and voila, it's added it back. But we still don't want to show it, so what's the solution? Well, it's to hide it, so we can use the hide option here. And so now analog won't show up on our storefront. So we'll press save and update. You can see analog's there. We'll give it a few seconds. Our price filters have gone. Looks like it's still doing a little bit of work. and we can see our analog filter is also gone. So that concludes the video. Thanks for watching.